and I should take over the world. <laughs> How you get here? You heard nothing. What's good? Back at you another tutorial. We're going to go over this advanced slide effect here in DaVinci Resolve. Before I go any further in the video, remember if you use code SPOOKY24 at checkout, you can get 20% off anything in my store site-wide. And so I got a clip here from the new exhibit video. Apparently, exhibit is back rapping again. So I'm going to click on this clip, hold Alt and make a copy of it. Then I'm going to hit Control D. I'm going to cut it down to one second. Then I'm going to go back here and cut and split this clip. Moving this up to delete that. And then I'll take this and overlap it on top of my previous clip. Then, of course, we're going to go into Fusion. So right click and open in Fusion. So first things first, we need to mask out our clip. We're going to click on a subject, hit Control Space, type in Magic Mask. Now, if you're in the free version of Venture Resolve and you end up using Runway ML to mask out your clip, you basically want to render the clip in place, which I'll tell you how to do in this video here, if you don't know already. And then you'll take your mask clip and your original clip and basically select them, create a new Fusion clip. When you go into Fusion, you'll have both your Media 1 and your Media 2. If you're in Adventure Resolve 19, it'll pop through in the background node. you just delete that, delete the merge nodes, and then whatever your main subject or your mask clip is, you'll basically set it to the side and basically just follow along with the rest of the tutorial. When using Magic Mask, you always want to select the subject with every, or select the part of the footage where your subject is in complete view. So like right here, his hands is kind of covered up. I don't want that. It should go about right here. So everything's pretty much in view. So then I'm going to go through and select my subject. I'm going to all to get rid of this little spec here. Looks like I got a pretty good selection. I'm going to go ahead and click on better. And then I'm going to track back and forward. And small tip, if you click into the node flow and then go back and click in the viewer, hit A on the keyboard, it brings up your alpha channel. Basically, anything that's white is what you can see, and everything that's black is completely transparent. And basically, you just want to go through the different frames and just make sure everything on your subject is white. Like right here, basically, there's a piece missing. Now, I can go through and just select this, and it'll bring it in its place, and basically, Magic Mask create a keyframe. So you'll see the little white notch that it create a keyframe for it. You can see stuff like this, where it's all kind of blotchy, whatever. That's because of the motion blur. So if I go back now, click on this, and hit C for color, you can see his hands are moving around, and it's creating motion blur. Anytime you're using any type of tracking software, whether it's Runway ML, Rotor Brush from After Effects, the tracker, the planner tracker, anything, Anything with motion blur is pretty much your enemy when it comes to tracking. If you're not subscribed to the channel, it'd be a good time to do so. Especially if you use studio version of DaVinci Resolve. I have a tips and tricks video for Magic Mask and a whole workflow that I'm coming up with soon. But now I'm going to click on Magic Mask. I'm going to hit Control and Space and type in Saver. Now what we're going to do with the Saver node is basically save out or render out our subject. Due to the fact that Magic Mask takes up a lot of resources because it's constantly tracking in the background, you don't want to try to be working with Magic Mask and trying to do other VFX at the same time. So now I'm going to click on Browse. Click in Browse will open up your file explorer. You basically want to create a new folder. I'm just going to call it a YouTube demo or YT demo. And then go inside and I'm just going to click to create. Then I'm going to call it X sub or exhibit subject. And then hit save. Now I'm going to go over here to Fusion. Go to render all savers. So what this is going to do is render out everything we did with the magic mask. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to double click an empty space. Hit Control space. Type in loader node. Now, the loader node is automatically going to open to whatever file you created. So, I'm going to go to the very first frame in that and basically just render everything out in frames. Then, I'm going to hit open. So, now if I click on this and hit two on the keyboard to bring in the viewer, you see absolutely nothing. Failure! That's because if you go over here to look at the global in and out, it's looking for frame zero. And since I didn't change this clip into a fusion clip or a compound clip beforehand, it's not, it doesn't have frame zero. It has whatever the frame was from the original video. So now we go down here and look at the frames. It's 1950. So go over here, global in and out. Type in 1950. Hit enter, and it brings it back in. So now what we can do is actually get rid of the magic mask and the saver node. So now we don't have magic mask constantly tracking our subject in the background. So I'm going to sit this over to the side for now. I'm going to click on the media out and hit two on the keyboard, bring that in viewer, and basically going to create these different masks around the subject. So I'm going to click on media one and grab a background node. Click on that background node. Go to operator and inspect the tab and change it to in. And then click on the merge one, hit control T. And that's gonna swap input. So now that's basically gonna lock our media into the background node. And we're gonna create a mask on the background node for the effect. So click on the background node, grab a rectangle mask, and then I'm just going to line this up where I want it. I'm gonna put it around, mostly around his head, about right there. And then we're gonna repeat the process. So actually, I'm gonna click on the merge one, grab a transform node. We're gonna leave it as it is for right now. And I'm gonna move the media up, media one up at the way, and I'm gonna box select all these nodes, hit control space, 
Double click an empty space and hit Control B. Then I'll take that transform output, connect it back to the original transform output. It's gonna create a new merge. Then I take the output from my media one and connect it to the green input on this new merge here, the merge one dash one. It's gonna bring the picture back into view. Then I'm gonna click on this rectangle mask. I'm gonna go to angle, double click and type in 90 degrees. And I'm just gonna move it over to the side. And then I'm gonna widen it out. Well, change its height to widen it out. You want the mask to fill up your entire composition to basically bring it all back together. I'm gonna double click empty space again, hit control V. Take the output of the transform was now is one dash two. Connect it back to this merge and repeat the process again, taking the output of the media one dash one and connecting it to this merge here. Click on the rectangle mask. I'm gonna type in 90 again. And I'm gonna move this over to the side here. Actually, I'm just gonna delete this. Click on this rectangle mask, hit control C. Click on this background node and hit control V to connect it. And then I'm just gonna move the X and Y over to this side here. That way it'll be more or less the same size. And then I'm gonna box select these nodes again. Control space and just repeat. So this one here, I'm gonna move down to the bottom and I'm gonna leave that square open. Basically, I'm gonna have one zoom in for the square. So double click into space again, paste, connect the transform, connect the media to the green input. Click on this rectangle mask. Actually, I'm just gonna delete it all together and grab a new one and then shorten it down to fill in that space in the square. And so once you're done, your whole composition should come back into play. So then I'm going to my last frame, then I'm going to go to the transform one, and I'm going to set a keyframe under X, Y axis. I'm going to do the same thing for the other transforms as well. So transform, X, Y axis, set a keyframe. I'm going to set a keyframe X, Y axis on the first three of this last one, though. I'm actually set a keyframe on the size. So the last one, I'm going to have it come in from the background. It's basically zoom in. So now we're basically going to slide the different parts of our subject out. So then I'm going to go back up to my first transform, hold control, and zoom back out. And basically, I'm going to slide this over which is actually being covered up by my other mask. I'm just sliding it over till I can't see anymore or basically to this green box is outside the frame. I'm basically gonna repeat that for each one. So I'm gonna go to the next transform. This time, this one here, I'm actually move down on the Y axis. And then I do the same thing on the next one. So I'm gonna move up on this one. And then I'm gonna click on this one and move it. Instead of moving it down, moving it up, I'll move it to the other side where the top one went to that side. So yeah, the bottom one here, go to that side and then go to the Final transform, I'm just gonna turn the size all the way down to zero. And so now if we hit play. So then I'm gonna move this media out down, go back up here and grab my loader node, I'm take the output of it and connect it back to the merge five down here at the bottom. And then we're gonna use a DVE node for the last one. So I'm gonna click on the loader node. Then I'm gonna use the DVE node to animate our subject. So we're gonna click on the subject here, hit control space, type in DVE. If you never use a DVE node before, it kind of somewhat allows you to move in 3D space without having to mess around with 3D tools. So I'm gonna hit enter. So now I'm gonna go to inspector tab, click on center and Z. Then go back to my first frame. I'm gonna move this on the X and Y axis to the left, right? Make sure that green box is outside of you. And then I'm also gonna move this down on the Z axis all the way up. Basically come back in at an angle. Now lastly, we're gonna grab another transform node. I'm gonna click on this merge six, grab a transform and make sure it's attached. Then we're gonna go into the settings. Click on motion blur. You're gonna turn it all the way up on both quality and shutter angle. And the reason why we're doing that on transform node, because that transform node would affect everything behind it, well, above it. And so basically the transform node is gonna affect this all at the same time, creating motion blur. And then forget we gotta smooth out our animations. So we're actually gonna do this all in one fail swoop. So I'm gonna hold control on the keyboard or command if you're on Mac. Like transform one, this one, this one, this one, and the DVE node. Click on the spline tab, you should see everything there. So you basically wanna Go through and check them off again and hit zoom to fit. And since we use the exact same keyframes, all those should line up with one another. And then I'm gonna select all keyframes, right click, and I'm gonna go to ease out cubic. Then I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard. And I'm gonna add more ease in. So I'm gonna add up to about 45 to 50 on the ease in. So you, want, you really want it to slow down towards the end. So I'm gonna go right up to 50. And we effectively just control the spine for all of our nodes. So now we go back to the edit page. So now we're back on the edit page. I'm waiting for it to render, but of course I got to plug in my own little products real quick. So we go into effects. I'm going to, go to favorites. I'm going to grab an adjustment clip. If you don't have it saved in favorites, it'll be under effects. I'm going to click this and hit control D and cut this down to one second as well. Actually, I'm going to make a half that. So I'm going to hit control D again. I'm going to go to frames and I'm going to type in 12. Then I'm going to go back to effects and I'm going to grab a camera shake from my rumble pack. I'm going to go down to GS effects, rumble pack. I'm gonna grab the XY heavy and just place it onto my adjustment clip. 
period in comic keys. I'm going to move it over just a little bit, covering up the tail end of that transition. And that's the effect. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop a comment. If you have not already, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you know we'll upload new content. I'll see y'all next time.